Hello world and welcome back to my channel AIBegins.net. I had been thinking of creating a video series on ROS for a while now. And after dragging my feet for so long, here I am with the first video in the three part series in which we are going to set up a ROS system by which you can easily develop robots on your own the easy way. In this video, we are going to learn how to install Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi 4 and set up SSH so that you don't have to run behind your robot with a keyboard and a mice just to see what's wrong with it. For working with ROS, I recommend that you install an Ubuntu based distro on your PC. Here I am using Pop OS 20.04. Links in the description. Alright, let's begin. First of all, you'll have to open up a terminal on your Ubuntu machine using Windows plus D command. That's the easiest way to do that and we'll be opening a lot of terminals in this video. First, we'll install Snap Daemon. It will help us install Snaps, which is an Ubuntu equivalent of Windows installer that is dependency free. We are going to install Raspberry Pi Imager using a Snap package. You will be prompted for a password, so fill that in. Alright, Snap Daemon is installed. Let's now install the Raspberry Pi Imager. Now type in sudo snap install rpy hyphen imager this might take a minute or two i'm just speeding things up here let's close this terminal and now raspberry pi imager should show up in the install programs This neat little utility will make your life much easier when it comes to installing operating systems on your Raspberry Pi. And now it's time to choose our operating system and in this case we are going to choose Ubuntu which you can find under General Purpose OS tab. Now you will be presented with a plethora of choices and we will be choosing Ubuntu 20.04 Server Edition 64-bit so that we get a lean machine which can easily run ROS without all the overhead. A server edition will not contain any GUI or other bells and whistles and that would help us save on RAM and compute resources. Now is the time to plug in the micro SD card into your PC. I recommend at least a 32 GB one so that we have enough room in the future. Please choose the right storage from the list otherwise your data will be wiped out. And now hit the right button and after making sure that it's the right SD card, click on yes. Fill in the password, hit enter and you're good to go. Now this step will take a while, it will download the OS and write it onto the SD card. So this is a good time if you want to take a break. In the meantime, let's see why robots won't be taking over the world anytime soon. because it still needs to learn how to handle lazy cats. Usually, Raspberry Pi requires you to have a keyboard, mouse and a display connected to it so that you can boot it up and set it up. But here, we are going for a headless setup. So don't remove your SD card yet. We'll need to make some changes in the files so that we can boot into it using a Wi-Fi connection from our own PC. Go to the system boot drive which is newly created. Here, right click and open up a terminal. First, we'll need to figure out the IP address of our Wi-Fi card using the command ifconfig. And here is the IP address we need and we'll need to remember the first three terms. Now we need to edit a file called networkconfig in the system boot drive. For that, type in sudo nano networkconfig. As you can see here, I have edited the file to include my Wi-Fi SSID and password. In the address section, I have given it a static IP address. Now this is the IP address by which we'll identify a Raspberry Pi on the network. Notice that I have used the same first three terms here, followed by a random term. Now make sure that no other network device on your Wi-Fi network is identified by that name. So put in something random. I just put in 123. The indents are important here. 
So try to go through a link that I've given in the description which talks about how to edit this particular file. Alright, that's done. Now Ctrl plus O to overwrite the file and Ctrl plus X to exit. Now remove the SD card and plug it into your Raspberry Pi 4 and power it up. Let's give the Raspberry Pi a minute to boot up and then we'll open up a new terminal and generate some SSH keys for uh, secure shell communication. Type in SSH keygen, hit enter for all the other prompts and we have generated our SSH keys now. Alright, now let's log into our Raspberry Pi. Type in SSH space Ubuntu which is the default username at the rate followed by the static IP address that we provided earlier. Type in yes and now you'll be prompted for password. The default password is Ubuntu and once you do that you will need to change it to a new password as a security measure. Yeah that one was too simple so type in something that has letters and numbers. Now for what we are going to do in the future it would be really easy on us if we don't have to type in our password every time we want to log in via SSH. So we'll use some command line magic to go for a passwordless SSH. Alright, we have successfully changed the password. Now type in ssh-copy-id followed by ubuntu at the rate or IP address. Alright, we'll now enter our password which we changed earlier one last time. Alright, the keys have been shared and now we'll be able to log into our Raspberry Pi without a password. Let's check that out. Type in ssh ubuntu at the rate or IP address. Tada! We are in. So we don't need any additional keyboard, mice or a monitor to get into a Raspberry Pi. Cool, right? Congratulations! We have now successfully set up a headless Raspberry Pi. Even though I covered this for ROS, the same technique applies if you want to create your own Raspberry Pi headless setup for any task that you want to do. Alright, in the next video we are going to learn how to install ROS on Raspberry Pi and set it up. If you don't want to wait for the next video, I've shared a link in the description which shows how you can install ROS on Raspberry Pi. I'll be following the same tutorial as well. And that's it for this video, I hope you got to learn something from it. Thanks for sticking till the end and here is a little sneak peek of the robot that we are going to build by the end of this series. Do think of subscribing to the channel, give it a like and press that bell icon so that you get notified when the next video gets out. See you guys later. Bye bye.